All right, welcome back to Study Ball. Took a few weeks off after the end of the season, uh, but now it's time to start diving into the college prospects for this year's NFL draft. And so did it last year, and just want you guys to know this year, no particular order. It just was how I started diving into the tape. And what I did this year is I, instead of going back through a bunch of film uh, and just pulling out, you know, I guess whatever you want to pull out, right? When you, when you watch guys play over a long period of time, especially the, the top prospects, you're going to be able to pull a lot of really good stuff. By the same token, you could probably pull a lot of bad stuff depending on the narrative that you want to share. So this year, what I decided to do was just go and pick one of the better games uh, by each of the quarterbacks and then just break down that game. I want to see in the course of the game, the highs and lows, what become themes in the course of a game. Of course, everybody's going to have a bad play here or there in every single game. But I was trying to pick up some themes because I felt like if you looked at the course of a game, especially one of their better games, you were going to get a feel for the things that they did really, really well. And then maybe there was a theme throughout that game, even though they played well, of things they didn't do quite as well and the improvements they may have to make to take the next step uh, and to become great at the next level. So again, no particular order, but I decided, decided to start with Kenny Pickett. A number of people say that he may be the top guy drafted um, you know, this year. I think that's still up for debate depending on who you like and the skill set that you like, but had a great season last year, wanted to dive into one of his game films where he threw for over 500 yards uh, and see what we could pull from it. All right, so Kenny Pickett's game against Miami, like I said, he threw for over 500 yards. And so just always looking for themes and things that guys do. I really like this drop. It's kind of the drop that I teach from the shotgun. A lot of people talk about three and five step drops. I like what I call a hop drop. See how here he goes up, right? Obviously not a position to throw when you're going up, but that's all about timing. But then when you go up, you have to come down. Right there, when he comes down, he's loaded and he's ready to throw the football. That to me is how you play the quarterback position. Whenever you get to the top of the drop, can you be in a throwing position as soon as you get there? Or how quickly can you get there? Because that allows you to get the ball out of your hands. So I love the little hop drop. Boom, hits the back foot, ball out of his hands on time and again taking the easy one right we're looking at a big concept here but all i'm seeing is this right here i got a soft corner against a one-on-one -on -one guy running a hitch over here boom get it out of your hands get it out quick no hesitation nice accurate throw good play there by kenny pickett again we talk about getting those feet in the ground and getting the ball out. See it again here, kind of a little shuffle hop, sticks that back foot in the ground. As Soon as that back foot goes, boom, ball's out of his hands, okay? Looking at a little quick post right here. He's got a linebacker sitting inside, got depth here, so we're gonna clear this out, but there's a small little window here in between these two players right there. That quick slant, I know I've gotta get it out on time, Kenny's got the ability to stay balanced, stick that back foot in the ground, no hesitation, boom, balls out, and he splits those two different defenders, picks up a first down, accurate throw, really, really well done. There's another one, always looking at, do they see the field, or they see in rotation? So we started out, maybe we say to ourselves, this is a quarters look. Okay, even though this guy's a little more in the middle of the field and this guy's a, down a little bit farther, okay, maybe you have an indication that they're going to rotate back to three and he's going to come down. But does a nice job here because he's going to have a little seam route back here. Seam routes are always thrown off of the free safety if it's middle closed. So he sees him basically cheating over to the field. He's going to come out off the play action. You're going to see as he comes off the play action, eyes are right there, knows exactly what he's getting, knows that he's got to hold that free safety right there, and now he's going to come back, boom. Once again, feet in the ground, ball out, 
beats the free safety with the throw. Really, really well done at recognizing that, getting the ball out. Now, one thing that you'll see from Kenny, and I'll show it, I like to do a tape that's the positive, and then I like to come back and take a look at the things I think they need to improve on. There's a number of times when he really tries to rip the ball down the field where the ball will go a little bit high on him. See it right there, not a horrible throw, obviously. Really good throw, second level, but the ball kind of will get away from him a little bit on these second level drive throws, just something to pay attention to. It's another one, anticipation, right? Understanding what I'm seeing. We're gonna run a go route right here. Got man-to-man -man coverage. See the back of the head of the corner, so little chance of him falling off, even though I've got a safety over the top. Feel like it's man. We're gonna push up with our tight end, and we're going to break out right here. But just, I want you to watch as the tight end breaks out. Boom, balls out of his hands, puts it low and away to the outside, and you see, you see all of this stuff. I mean, when he's throwing this football, I mean, there's four guys in the exact same spot right there, but he recognizes the turn of that corner, knows that he's going to run out of there with his guy and that he can anticipate this throw, even though it's not clean. Good throw, puts it on the outside, another nice completion. Always believe a difference maker for any quarterback that takes the step from college to the NFL is second level throws, what I call chunk throws. That's the difference maker, right? Everybody's gonna be able to make the short throws. Most guys can make the deep throws to some degree uh, because it's laying the ball out there and they all have enough arm, but it's that 15 to 35 yard range, your accuracy, your ability to have velocity on the football, be able to throw different kinds of ways is a telltale sign to me on whether you can be great. Not that you're going to be, but that you can be great at the next level. So they're gonna run a little play right here, clearing this guy out, and then they've got these deep double crossers, usually just reading the free safety right there, and the free safety in this situation, right? I get him to turn his hips, get him to turn his hips this way, and I'm gonna find the space over here if I know it's man to man. So you'll see it right here. Nice throw up and over. He's gotta go up and over this defender uh, while making this second level throw. I love the touch, being able to set it up and down. Really good throw right there by Kenny Pickett. Again, second level throws. We're gonna roll a little bit to the right hand side. We've got really a double post concept here with a deep over. And here's what I love. Most people are really focused in on this deep over on this particular play. We get it cleared out, we get man to man, which we get here. I really like the deep over. But I'm a believer that I always want to be able to read the deep area of the field first. So as we come back, they rotate to a one high. We're gonna go what we call an influence post or a deep cross with the post. I always like to read deep first. I wanna go get the touchdown first. Yes, this would be a great big play for us, but I'm gonna go get the touchdown. So I'm gonna read that free safety. He gets high, boom. I'm gonna take the easy throw on the crosser like we just saw on the last play. He jumps the crosser. Now I'm gonna take a shot at the deep post if I like it, and then to the over. So right here, as he's rolling, we know the primary is probably that deep over, but he reads depth by the free safety. He knows what he's got right there, but, right, this is what I'm talking about. When he's got to send these drive throws, the ball can hang on him a little bit, and this one here gets intercepted on this play. I love the read. Maybe he can get a little bit of help with his receiver flattening this off. Gets that safety to turn. Even though he got depth, if he gets him to turn, may have a shot at this post backside, but I love the fact that he's reading through these plays and he's not just going to his primary every single time. So I like the read here. And again, just something to pay attention to on these chunk throws when he's got to drive them. Sometimes I feel like the ball would hang on him a little bit as it did there, a little bit late. But as I said, could get a little bit of help by his receiver as well.
Love the touch. Love the touch. Come back. I'm going to hold the free safety. Hold the free safety with my eyes. Let my guy get out there. And then it's great touch on the football. You know, you can look at this and go, oh, it's not a perfect throw. No, it's not a perfect throw. And it's hard to set a perfect throw 45 yards down the field. But puts great air on the ball. The ball turns over. So what I mean by it turns over is that it gets to the top like a punt and then it starts to drive and drop down. Once that happens and it turn, turns over and starts to drop down, that's when the receiver can actually gauge where it's going. Now he can adjust and make a play. So right here, not a perfect throw, but it's outside. It's got great touch. It allows his receiver to gauge where the ball is and make the catch. I also like the fact that he's not throwing it too quick, okay? Quarterbacks always talk about forcing defenses to cover width and depth. So when we've got a free safety and we're throwing a go ball, I don't want to throw it so quick that he can simply just go straight across and play the football. We want them to have to cover that ground, but also have to figure out the right angle and cover depth on that particular play as well. So we want them to have to go sideways and back because now they've got to play a little bit more perfect and it's harder for them to gauge that angle. So I like this. He's not rushing it. He's taking it five hitch, lay the ball out there, and you see the free safety, right? He's trying to take his angle because he can't get beat deep, and now he's no factor on this play because we forced him to cover width and depth. Really like that by Kenny Pickett right there, and I love how he gives his receivers an opportunity to catch the football. All right, one thing I think Kenny Pickett does really, really well is manipulate the pocket. Good athlete, you know, you might not say he's a great athlete, but he plays the position athletically, especially inside the pocket. So here he's looking to his right hand side. He's got this double under concept. It's all cloudy right there. Looks like he's trying to come back to his back here as a check down. But as he does that, he feels the match uh, here. So he's able to kind of manipulate the pocket, move his feet and come back to this big end right here. Something I always want to watch is processing. What's the processing? Look right, come back to my check down, don't have it. See the slight little slide left, boom. Reset the feet, make the second level throw. Really well done, again, by Kenny Pickett to be able to work through the process of the play. Here's another one, going through the process. So the process, looking over to his right, He's got this shallow here, okay? Maybe you think he's got a little bit of leverage, but he gets one guy to jump it. So now he's working back to his uh, next level guys. Everybody's dropping deep, boom. Now he drops it off to his back right here. Good processing, right? Shallow, no. Come back here, depth, depth, depth. There it is right there. Number three read, finding my check down giving him a good ball, right? That's the other thing. Good touch on the ball, right? You see his technique's a little bit away from him as he's kind of falling forward, but still good touch so his guy can adjust to it. Boom, right? Get there quick, give him a good ball, and what can happen? We could turn that into a touchdown on a check down. Don't have to throw it a long ways to get a big play. So hear it again. This is where he's really good. Okay, has the ability to kind of feel the pocket, feel an opening, step up, prolong the plays, boom, drive this ball in there, in that window, really like it. On the move, he was really, really good last year, uh, you know, and you always want to know, can those guys continue to do that at the next level? But I thought that was one area that he really separated himself, no matter what you say about how athletic he is. He plays the position athletically. Buying time right here, right? How athletic is he? Man, he buys time right here. He's one-on-one -on, -one on the linebacker, sticks it, gets out around with his speed, keeps going, doesn't slide, gets his team close to a first down. Another nice job extending plays. And he can do that with his feet to run or with his feet to make throws out in space. All right, here, I really like this one. So. Miami here comes with a blitz zero. So they've got all these guys up here. 
We've only got five guys to block them, so that's what we call blitz zero. Everybody's playing man-to-man. -man. There are zero defenders back here playing zone coverage. So got to get the ball out of your hands. Good recognition right here. And you got options. We always say when you get blitz zero, especially if the team's playing outside leverage with the number of teams will do, we want to attack the middle of the field because it's an easy throw for the quarterback. And obviously, there's nobody back there to stop it. So he goes with the quick post right here. Could have hit the stick as well, but he understands the weakness of the defense. Again, puts that foot in the ground, right? He buys some time until he has to, right? This is what we call the blitz zero retreat. You retreat until it's time to throw the football. Once you throw the football, you stick that foot in the ground. You don't throw it falling away. Stick that foot in the ground and drive the throw. He does that right here. You'll see, right? He's got a free hitter coming at him, but as soon as he hits that back foot, ball is out of his hands, understands the timing of the whole thing, and boom, gets a nice play right there. So there's a look at Kenny Pickett and the things that he does really, really well. Why some people have him at the top of the draft board from the QB position. Good feel for the game. Good feel in the pocket. Nice job of processing information and getting through his reads. I love how he gets set in the pocket. Gets loaded up in the pocket very, very quickly so he's ready to take those first window throws. He's able to hit some of those throws that other guys that have to hitch their feet, have to get back into balance, are not going to be able to make. So there's a lot to like about Kenny Pickett. I like that last play, recognizing blitz. As we get into the next tape, that was an area where I look, it looked like he struggled for the most part in this game, was recognizing pressure and getting it out of his hands quickly, something he'll have to do better at the next level.